Today, we're gonna to discuss the best laptops for every cybersecurity domain, and spoiler alert, contrary to popular belief, not every single cybersecurity job involves you being a super elite hacker, debugging a bunch of code, and running 10 different virtual machines on your local computer. That's just not the way things are. So in just a few moments, I'll talk about why your specific job should dictate the tech that you use. I'll talk about the laptops I personally use for my current cybersecurity work. I'll talk about what my whole team uses for their work, including the engineers, and then I'll finally go over the last uh, four or five different cybersecurity jobs that I had and the actual laptops I used for those jobs. After this video, you should be able to walk away knowing exactly what to buy in your career. And if you don't know what you want to do yet, you'll at least be able to make a nice informed decision. All right, so let's just get right into it. So the best laptop for cybersecurity, it strongly depends on like the domain and the job you're actually doing. So before you get mad, just hear me out. So the vast majority of cybersecurity jobs don't actually require any specialized hardware. If you think about GRC, especially any, any of those kind of soft analyst positions, even a lot of architecture and engineering jobs, a lot of those are like SaaS based and browser based. You don't really need anything. You just need something that has a lot of stability, predictability, it's easy to use and it has a long battery life. And if you're like me, you're using the laptop all day. You just want it to work every time and be stable and you don't, you don't want the battery to die really quick. And for me, I just ended up defaulting on the newer MacBooks. That's like the M series MacBook. I've used a ton of different Windows like x86 architecture based laptops, like a, a bunch of different brands. And the moment I used like a M1 MacBook Air the first time, I, I just felt the computer's magic because it just worked every time. It doesn't screw up Windows updates. The battery simply lasts forever and it's quiet. It's just like really, really good and really stable. I've literally tried to quit using iPhone and Apple products many times, but they just keep winning out on reliability, predictability, and battery life. It just feels silly to use anything else. So I just use them unless I have to use something else, uh, like I need some kind of specialized hardware or something. So if your job doesn't require specific hardware, and most jobs really don't, you can pretty much just use whatever you want and focus on reliability and battery life. And for me, that just ended up being uh, the new MacBooks, like the M series MacBook Airs and MacBook Pros. So if I had to pick two main laptops, basically the way I'm going to break this down is you can either like use whatever you want, or I recommend using like a specific x86 architecture type laptop where you can install Linux on it if you want, or Windows. Windows or, or whatever you want. So in the scenario where you can pretty much use any laptop you want, I, to be honest, I just recommend getting like a new MacBook Air or a MacBook Pro if you need extra power for some reason. I used to use a MacBook Pro M1 uh, when I was doing editing and, and all that stuff myself, but I switched to the new MacBook Air M4 and I just literally use that for everything. Like all my architecture and engineering and all my random stuff, it's just done on a MacBook Air. and. For the x86 side, like if you need specialized hardware, so you need to install Linux or you need to like build, you, you need like some special environment to build something like you're developing something. Um, I recommend getting like a Lenovo ThinkPad, like a, a modern one, like maybe the X1 Carbon or any you know, any other like decent ThinkPad because um, they're just really reliable in terms of like non-Mac systems. You don't have to like get that exact one. You can do research and figure out what's good, but I'll just, you know, MacBook, M1 or not M1, but MacBook M series, MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, just get an Air if you don't need to do heavy stuff or any kind of modern Lenovo ThinkPad. So I'm going to break down which cybersecurity jobs or rather which domains benefit uh, from which type of laptop. But for a more concrete answer, we can look at this chart I built out. It lists out all the different cybersecurity domains and then examples of jobs that you might do in the domain and the different things that you would do for those jobs. So you can kind of get an idea of which jobs or which domain requires specialized hardware and then which ones you can kind of just use whatever you want. So just looking at this uh, security and risk management, asset security and IAM or identity and access management, for sure, like most of those jobs in those domains can be done with pretty much any laptop so like to be real like when you start working at an actual company they're just they're just going to issue you a laptop so you probably don't need to think about it but for those i would prefer to just use macbook just because the battery is so good and it's so easy to use. And then software development, security, a lot of the time you can just get away with using whatever you want. But if you're doing some kind of specialized development where you need to build the thing like in a special environment, you might need to have some like specialized laptops. So if you're doing some kind of like really low level development or something, or you're you need to use a library or something that relies on a different architecture, it's a bit rare, but it just depends on what you're doing. You might 
have to use like an x86 based architecture laptop or something like this but you'll pretty much like know if you need to do that because if you're working at a normal company they'll just issue it to you so development and security it just kind of depends on like what you're actually developing right and then for communications and network security um in my opinion like most of this can be done with like a macbook right because a lot of that is going to be browser based or kind of like some kind of software defined networking or something in the cloud where you don't need to have some kind of specialized hardware. There could be scenarios where you need something special, right? But in most cases, you can pretty much get away with whatever. And then security architecture and engineering. Um, I, I do a lot of this personally and I'll, I'll talk about it in a bit. Um, it, again, this depends on what you're doing, but these days, like especially architecture, someone's gonna be like, it's not true, like X, Y, Z, but for architecture, I'm pretty certain you can get away with like doing anything because architecture is just like, you're just um, designing like system requirements for something that you're trying to build. You're not actually like uh, doing anything in the weeds. With engineering, you may be doing stuff because engineering, you're usually taking those like architecture documents or high level requirements and you're implementing them. Um, so you might need some kind of specialized hardware uh, if you're doing security engineering. But again, I'll talk about this in a bit. I do a lot of security engineering and I, I literally haven't touched a Windows like device with my hands for med like four years by now at this point. And then getting into security assessment and testing where you're doing like pen testing, red teaming, vulnerability analyst, potentially exploit development. Um, I would just probably recommend um, go going with some x86 architecture, like any kind of Lenovo ThinkPad. Like I used to have a ThinkPad before I like got on the Mac bandwagon. So like ThinkPad X1 Carbon or like some kind of similar platform. The reason for this is um, a lot of the time when you're doing red teaming, it depends on, again on what you're doing, but it's really convenient to be able to spin up uh, an operating system locally and like test something locally. Or if you're trying to do vulnerability, like remediation, you're, you're trying to patch something, it, it's really convenient to be able to like test that out locally instead of like doing, you know, using some cloud platform. So it's really nice to be able to have local VMs as well as like being able to do like local debugging, like inside of a virtual machine or something. It's just really convenient. So if you're doing like any kind of offensive stuff or vulnerability management, I would recommend, you know, getting a ThinkPad or something like this. You can probably get away with it with a Mac and then offload those special things to some like virtualized like cloud environment, but it's just a bit inconvenient sometimes. So Red Team, I might just, you know, go with something that you can install Linux on it if you want. And then same with security operations. Um, you can get away with Mac for like quite a bit, especially with all, all the cloud stuff these days. But you know, there might be like scenarios where having some like x86 architecture or the ability to install Linux becomes convenient for you. So if you know you're going to be doing like some hardcore security operations, you can get away with using a Mac, right? But if, you know, I, I might just, you know, get some kind of Windows laptop or something where I can install whatever I want on it. You know, it's like a Lenovo ThinkPad or something like this. So getting into what me and my team actually use for our work. Uh, so my current work, I run and operate uh, what's called the CyberRange. It's like a live environment where people can join, use a bunch of different enterprise security tools and practice security operations, vulnerability management and all. So I, I architected and engineered the whole like CyberRange from scratch. And that involves like a lot of like cloud architecture and engineering, a lot of Python coding, like a, quite a bit, a lot of KQL and just a lot of administration in general. And the thing that I use for like all of those is just a MacBook, MacBook Pro, MacBook M1 Pro, and then a MacBook M4 Air. I have not touched Windows or like anything else for several years at this point. And then the rest of my staff, like literally everyone from the backend Azure engineer to the front end engineer and web developer to the content managers and social media managers and like content creators and like editors, like everyone uses MacBook, like MacBook Pro M1 through M4, I believe, or M3. Um, two people, there's two guys who use like a like a high-end Windows gaming laptop, but it's like they just wanted to have it. But like everyone uses MacBooks and we, we're running like a legit business that has like a pretty decent income. Like it's enough for us to come together and like take trips, like work trips and like work together and everything. And we, we're we all using MacBooks. We could be using PCs, but it just so happens that the stuff we're doing like doesn't require special architecture and I'm doing like I'm doing a lot of like hard technical work especially and like I'm just doing all of those on MacBook just to give you an idea and then looking back on my past roles from principal security analyst to vulnerability management program manager to information security engineer to a senior information security analyst all of those roles issued me a Windows laptop um, it was either some kind of 
ThinkPad or some kind of Dell or something like this. Um, they didn't have to be Windows laptops, except for one of them, uh, the vulnerability management job, because I was doing some um, local vulnerability remediation testing, and it was just really convenient to be able to make VMs that match our environment where I could test stuff inside. Um, I could have done that in the cloud, of course, if I had a, a MacBook, but it's really it's just really convenient to be able to do the, to do that stuff locally. So pretty much like like all those jobs, I had Windows laptops, but only one job like kind of kind of really required it. Um, just to give you an idea. So finally, answering the question like what laptop I think you should buy if you're just getting into your cybersecurity career and you want to save money and you, you don't really know, I would just go out and get some refurbished ThinkPad or something like this. You don't have to spend a lot of money and it's. You know, it, you can pretty much do everything with it. But if you you have the money and you know you're not going to be doing some something that requires like really specialized hardware, like you're going to use the cloud for your VMs or whatever, I would pick up just some kind any like M series MacBook Air, uh, especially MacBook Air. It's like it's really good because it's affordable and battery life and like all the stuff. It's just like a really good platform. But the ultimate truth is, as long as you get like one of these, um, you're going to be fine. Like either either platform is gonna take you like really, really far, right? Because I, I build business, right, on a, a MacBook Air, right? We all use MacBooks and it's completely fine. And I, I do a lot of technical heavy lifting with it. And it's not gonna limit your career. Like that's pretty much the least of your worries. So if you if you have a lot of execution and you're just like, you know, studying a lot and doing all the stuff you're supposed to be doing, it's, you're not gonna get limited by your laptop, to, like regardless of what you buy, especially if you're just starting out. And no one says that you can't have two anyways. We also made a video where we scraped 100 different jobs from Indeed, and we broke them down to figure out which domains actually had the most jobs available, and then out of those jobs, which one paid the most. I think you think it's really interesting, so check it out. Also, if you want some high effort, entertaining, positive content, you can check out our Instagram. I talk about physique building, diet, health, fitness, and just general optimization, all while traveling with our team abroad. We put a lot of effort into it, and I think you'll think it's entertaining at least. So check that one out and we will see you in the next video.